Welcome, Ship Familia. What an amazing show we have for you today. We have Patrice Vermette, the production designer from the exciting movie Dune. So he will share some of the, um, the STEM backgrounds and uh, that are useful in production design and entertainment industry. And we also have our very own Jay Flores, the STEM ambassador and SHIP Lifetime member. So let's kick off our show today with the trailer from Dune. The outsiders ravage our land. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. So you're going tomorrow? Yes, I'm going tomorrow with the advanced team. I'd like you to take me with you. Are you trying to get me court-martialed? Can I trust you with something? I've been having dreams about a girl falling in battle. Felt like a vision. Dreams make good stories, but everything important happens when we're awake. <coughs> to the future of House Atreides. You have to be ready. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. They're not human, they're brutal. What if I'm not dead? You'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. Come on! My son. forever. Kill them all. This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Only together can we stand a chance. Let's fight like demons. Yes, I'm getting goosebumps again. I had the opportunity to go to a screening earlier this week, thanks to Warner Brothers and Ship. So very excited to have you here, Patrice. And thank you for having me. It's exciting yeah, to be here as well. We're just really blessed to have you. And when I got into the theater, and it had been a while since I've been able to go to a, a movie theater, but everything from the beginning credits with the Warner Brothers Shield had already uh -huh. had this excitement and sound and energy that brought us into the movie and I want to bring some of that out today uh, with your help but first I'd actually like to start and get a little bit of your background uh, uh, growing up was this something that you had always dreamed of doing or did you have other passions along the way that eventually evolved into production design well I um I, I, I think I started production designing without knowing it was production designing because I was um, when I was seven years old, my, my dad took me to see a movie and I had I was blown away uh, from the a bit like you, you described, you know, from the open opening credits, which weren't credit. It was like text that was going like that. <laughs> and it was Star Wars. And I was like, oh, yeah. my God. And we stayed until the end of the amazing uh, uh, soundtrack by uh, John Williams. And we I looked at all the, uh, the credits because I, I just wanted to the moment to stay longer and longer in the, in the in the in the theater. Like just I wanted to extend time, you know, and I was like looking at all the names. You're like, my God, there's a lot of it takes a lot of people to make it to make a movie. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, I was I started creating in my I was lucky enough to have, a, 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 my parents had a basement, which was not finished. It was like very rough in the basement, very raw. 
And uh, I started uh, creating those worlds in the basement to play with my toys, you know, totally inspired by Star Wars. And, uh, and it, you know, like with, with, uh, with fabric, with uh, branches, with like whatever I could find. And I, and I created um, these, these, these worlds. So my, my, it was funny because uh, that world expanded and uh, it took, uh, you know, like three quarters of the, of the basement in the end. And my parents, whenever they had uh, friends for over for dinner, they would take them down in the basement and look at the, the <laughs> this is this is the world that our, our our son is creating. So I I think that's where I started. But um, but then uh, in university, I, I I wanted to to I went into sound design. I wanted to be a, uh, I, I dreamt of being dreamed of be, being a, a record producer, okay. and um, and uh, that you know my my friends. Who were in the film uh, in the film uh, uh, program at Concordia University in Montreal? They a lot of them were uh, doing PA work, and uh, so they're the ones who introduced me to you know, working on set, being a, a PA, and eventually I, I, I liked I, I looked at the people in the art department and said, oh, they, th those work hard, but they they really looked like the people who have the more fun, and. Uh, and the creative jobs and uh, they, they, they looked like they're playing. So I said, can I, so I, I, I started, you know, slowly uh, getting into, into that. And, um, and I forgot about my music dreams, mm. but it's the same, you know, it's a creating, creating a, a, a visual uh, backgrounds. Uh, I, my approach is always, you know, like creating moods that will support uh, the story uh, that will go that will that will that will uh, yeah it's like between the lines you know like I, I read between the lines what is what are you supposed to feel what it, mm -hmm. what is the meaning of a certain scene and I, I, I and I and I riff on that to create a, a, a visual background it's basically like being a bass player in a band you're just like you're there to support the story support the song you're not there to play a solo but uh, yeah all the once in a while it does happen, but uh, yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. And, and I see it in the comments too, in the chat. So those listening in, please throw in any questions, comments on what Absolutely. Patrice is sharing. But one of the things that I was thinking and that came out here in the chat as well is how supportive your parents were of that curiosity and the exploration, which I think is extremely important wow. for science, technology, engineering, and math as well that our children get out there and get their hands dirty and play around and explore so that later on in the future, when opportunities like this come up or when they wanna go into engineering or science, they have that creative flow going. So they did play a, a big role in helping oh, you. They play, they play, they play, my, my parents played a huge role. They, um, they, they exposed us to, 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 to music, but all kinds of music, you know, like uh, uh, from classical music to uh, when I was nine years old, they, they, they took us to see Kiss, you know, not because they like Kiss, <laughs> but because it was like, wow, you know, like this, you know, this should be something and we exposed her. And then we saw the Bee Gees the same year, you know, it's like, okay. uh, and, and, and we were always going to, to museums, you know, like be interested. We were, we were going to the botanical gardens, look at plants and the, like just to ar arise uh, our, our curiosity. Like they, 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 they really supported that, you know, like that's, uh, I was at amazing parents, like, like look at the, like always you know try to 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 dig and to when you you know they, they were supporting for for us to find a passion mm -hmm. and once we found our passion we um you know we were allowed to to dig into it and my my dad's big philosophy in life uh, my dad who passed away uh, six years ago uh, his big philosophy uh, in life was like it try to find something that you really enjoy for like in your life for to work because from that moment on you will never feel like working you'll feel like playing you'll have fun and whatever you do you'll be successful because you'll want to have you'll want to put the extra time because it won't seem like work it's it's fun mm -hmm. uh, so follow your passion yeah absolutely i love that i think it's so important for our members you're all studying um, how to how to solve problems at, at, a, at the surface, right? That's what engineering mm -hmm. is. And so each of you 
I think the key to your success is finding which of those problems that you're most passionate about solving. So whether you're studying mechanical engineering or civil engineering, connecting your skills to a passion, I think is going to lead to a tremendous success, which we've seen right here with, with Patrice. And, and, and Jay, it, it, it's, it's a, you're absolutely right. And, and what's fun about, uh, about movie, movie making and uh, production design, there's a lot of problem solving involved in this job. You know, like uh, I remember uh, when uh, when I went with my wife see, uh, see in the 90s, we went to see a movie called uh, Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. And then there's a scene in which I don't know if you saw the movie, but there's a scene in which they are stuck in space and they take it and they're at the, the people at NASA, they or in Houston or either. I don't don't remember if it was in Florida or in Houston, but they there's a big table in a conference room and they throw stuff on the tables. OK, we've got that's all they have to work with. To get the oxygen working and uh let's find a solution and my wife looked at me and she she actually spoke during the movie and she went like you love to be in that room and i said yes i would have loved to be in that room <laughs> just say okay <laughs> yeah it's problem solving that's great and i think sometimes we we look to the world around us and don't realize how many things we can impact with just a, a few of those items and a little bit of curiosity and, and I think you hinted towards curiosity as part of the answer, but are there any other key skill sets or um, things that really help you in this space? Other skills that you gained aside from being curious that help you um, in your role? I think you need to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you definitely have to, to have uh, some sort of uh, some people skills because you interact with people, multiple personalities, you know, in uh, in departments, it, it's it's quite um, it's quite uh, funny how I interview people when uh, to, to to be part of my team, because my 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 philosophy is like if I I, I go to them and I ask you know if their 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 availabilities and uh, you know beyond that point it's if. You know, that, that, that first step is I know they can do the job, you know. But then the, the real interview, during the interview, we barely talk about the job and we just chit chat to see if our personalities will, will fit because through a production, you go through a lot of, uh, through a lot of stress and a lot of, uh, of moments and uh, you, you end up spending months and months with the same people in your team. And uh, you, 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 it's a big journey and you, you want to make sure that um, there's a, it's a good time. You spend, nobody's miserable, you know, like you don't want them to be miserable. And I was like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mutual casting. It's like, because we're going to be spending a lot of time together. So let's yeah. might as well have the same, you know, add some, some, some things in common, you know, to get, to get us through that. So so I think I think uh, a, a bit of psychology uh, psychology is good. Uh, being like a uh, someone who can listen, but but also can can um, can you know like group the team together, you know like um, so social skills for that I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you no know, curiosity uh, is key is key and uh, and uh, yeah I would. I would say that. And, and I think that's particularly valuable for our members, especially the student members getting ready for our national convention coming up soon, mm -hmm. where they'll be talking with recruiters from different companies and getting comfortable with those conversations Absolutely. is critical um, to be able to kind of open the door into those opportunities and relationships. And, and I would say, I would say something, uh, sorry, I interrupted you. No. Uh, I would say honesty and at work is okay. like, being able to say that I can do that, I can't do that, uh, ask the questions as well. Mm -hmm. Being honest about sometimes like not really understanding it because you know nobody will ever be upset if you like ask the, the question first. They may be upset if you didn't ask the question and you, and, but like, I think like honestly, and, and if someone asks you a, a question, what do you feel about, you know, about this? And you go like, oh, it's great. You know, it's not because it's the director that you have to say, it's great. If you think it's not that great and it could be better, yeah. that person will benefit from your, maybe not, will not agree, but maybe it will like start something in their mind and, and they'll go like, you know what? 
maybe I was overexcited about this thing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, it could be better. How would you see it? You know, and then, and then that's how things get better and better. If, if, if um, I know that there, there, there's a, there's a, you know, sometimes it could be very uh, like, uh, I would say scary to, 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 but, but, I, but I think, you know, if, if the, if the comments, if the question is asked to you, you know, it's because they want an honest answer. So yeah. I think anyways, that's how I, I lead my life, I lead my work. So I think that's, that's wonderful. And, and especially when you're working on a team, you're not expected to know everything. And sometimes we feel that that shows a sign of weakness or yeah. that it shows that we we're not as knowledgeable, but that's, that's what engineering is. That's what it takes to put something together. Mm -hmm. Like Dune is a, a bunch of minds working together and, exactly. and bouncing ideas off of each other. Exactly. Like uh, filmmaking is, um, is the, I think is the, 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 the best example of, uh, of team working. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when you um, also, one key thing is like, uh, I always try to always try to, to, to hire the people who have more knowledge than you. <laughs> They'll make you shine. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. great. Um, so there's, there's something, there's a quote that stood out to me in the movie when I got to see it at the screening. And it was when um, Paul's father was, was telling him, um, how, how does it feel to walk on a new world? I believe the quote was. And that's something that thanks to you, your team, all, all the work, I really felt like I was in that world. Uh, when you wanted us to feel fear, I felt fear. When you wanted the, to show power, I felt you know power in that room. Mm -hmm. What are some of the innovation and, and changes that you've seen? Uh, and I know this movie is designed for IMAX. So like, how do you design to bring us into those worlds? Well, uh, how do you design to bring us in those worlds? It, for, for me, uh, it starts, um, and that, that's a, that's a, that's a very good question, by the way. Um, for me, it starts with beyond, before the technology aspect of it, it, it starts by having a, a thorough reading of the, of the script and, and on an emotional level. Okay. It starts, it's, it's maybe it's the musical, uh, background, but it's, it's on a, on a, what, how do I feel when I read? And, and for Dune, I went back before reading the script. I went back to the to the book because uh, I knew how uh, how Denis uh, loved that book and how important it, the book has been in his life uh, as an inspiration. And uh, so, so I went to the book because I wanted to find the clues or the cues that would help me to 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 elevate uh, uh, visually uh, the script. Um, and then, you know, when you read this, then you read the script and say, okay, so I should feel like that. So what on Caladan, let's say as a planet, you know, like, how should I feel? I, I, should I, I think I should feel nostalgia. I should feel, I should feel like Paul Artredes is feeling like nostalgia, a bit, you know, nostalgia is a bit of sadness. It's, there's a bit of romanticism in the, the, then, then you read it. Okay, it's the it's an old it's the old world. Uh, when you read it, it's it's an old tradition uh, that's been there for thousands of years. There's um, so so all of those elements together, you know, like as an emotional reaction for me and for and and and, and thank God also for Denis because we, we we share the same the same love for that same season. It was fall. My emotional reaction was fall in Canada on the east or west coast that mist it's not too cold it's not too it's not too 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 warm fall is going towards the death of something it's a it's 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 a change it's the cycle of life and you know that's so that's how, that's how I, I react and then and then you you go okay the the, the big change they go to arrakis arrakis is supposed to be something that Paul experiences, which has a major impact on uh, on his emotional, uh, on his emotion, and Paul has read a lot uh, through film books. He's used a lot of film books to, to research. He was curious about where it was going. He was curious about about the 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 the, the planet, but also it's uh, uh, the people who live there, the Fremens. 
And uh, so he, he researched also about the ecology of the planet, you know, like there's a scene like, like that in the, in the movie. But then when he experiences it for the, f- for the first time and, and there's spice in the air and they, this, the archness of the sun, you're like, okay, you need to visually support that, you know? So, so in the book, you know, like it says the residency is the biggest uh, palace ever built by, by humankind. So that's a great clue. That's a great uh, cue because, okay, then you, you riff on that. So, okay, it's the biggest. Uh, of course, it's the biggest thing. It's, it's the planet was, um, what, what was, uh, was inhabited by, 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 uh, by, by the Fremen. And then a uh, colonial entity came in and they said, let's, like, when they discovered spice, let's exploit it. And uh, who cares about the, 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 the locals? We will now control that planet. So they want to show, uh, they, they want to have a show of force. So they built those massive, massive structure, just like a, 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 an imperial, uh, uh, like a colonial uh, w- would s- set up a shop in a, in a country. They would want to show power by the architecture. So, so, uh, so anyways, they, they, um, they that's, that, that, that's, that's how I work. It's like, and, and then, you know, like for, for the architecture of the planet, you say, uh, of, of, of the, of Arakin, and you go like, okay, well, uh, if I would have been the, the, found, the founder of, of that city, I, I would have probably uh, set it up in the, in the, not in the desert because there's big sandworms. I would have set it up in natural protective protection using the mountain. So you use a mountain bowl to set, to set on, the, on, on, on solid ground, on, on rock. And then you read the book. The, there's they they give they they t- they say that on Arrakis there's wind that goes at at 750 kilometers an hour that tears through metal. You would be crazy to build anything straight, you know, with winds like that. So you build everything, you know, like a, a, at an angle. So so the wind sweeps over it. In the book, in the script, uh, there's heat. You cannot like uh, you cannot stay long long at the uh, outside. You're gonna die. Okay, so how do you cope with that in the architect as a re- architectural response, visual response? You build these uberly thick, like nine meters wide, wide the thick uh, walls to keep the cool inside. And you certainly don't want direct sun because sun will kill you. So you create those light wells. So there's to light, to light the palace. So there's never ever any direct light. So, so, so it's anyways, it's, it's, that's, that's how I work. I don't know if I answered your question and, and, and to create that, well, I use software, different types of software, 3d modeling software and um, use a, I have a very sculptural approach to things. Um, so I create shapes, you know, sculpt, okay. The light would come from there, from there. And then uh and then I use I have a great team of concept artists who work with me, and uh, they 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 riff you know on my references about my models, and um, and then uh, and then I'm sorry I I think I'm over answering your question. No, <laughs> I'm talking great. and talking and talking. This is but, great um, because I feel like I may have subconsciously noticed some of these things as I'm watching the film. Um, but when you actually say it out loud, I'm like, okay, now I connect the dots as to why the size of the structures, the, the angles that you mentioned, I, I was kind of thinking about that while watching and, and you created all these, um, you know, multiple worlds that all had to feel believable, feel like yeah. you were entering these worlds and understand why each of them was this way. And so, like you mentioned, arriving in Iraq is like, you, mm. you feel like, man, if I was stuck there, what would I well, what, how would I, how long would I survive? Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> what so, would I do? <laughs> so, 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 so Paul, he, he, he walks in that place and he's like, oh my God, this is, this is so different than I, what I ever live in. And, uh, you know, like, and he walks and, and in the palace, you know, he, wa- he, he walks in the corridor and he, he sees those, uh, those murals and, and uh, one of them, you know, he, because he's, he's, he's learned about the, the, the sandworm, but one of them depicts the sandworm in a very mythical way it's not a scare way it's a god-like 
Uh, it's a godlike uh, figure which has his mouth open and it's like the sun. So he said, okay. And in my, in my mind, it was as if uh, the, the first, uh, the, 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 the first co 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 the imperial, the, the empire, when they, when they settled and the, and they, they first built the uh, Arakin, they would have probably have like local artists. That, that's in my, that's in my mind. That's in the, mm -hmm. that's in my mind. Um, local artists who would have done like just to decorate the, the murals just in, in the palace and probably in the likes of the in the same concept of the as a, a Diego Riviera you know like the they would have okay it's something in honor of the workers and honor of uh, of the um of the spice explaining the spice uh, and explaining the planet you know what what, what it's about so so uh and the Fremen would would respect the um that that the the worm because you know it's a you don't see they see it as an ally not not necessarily they see it as 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 death but as death as as a as very very dangerous but at the same time they they have a lot of respect for it so that's what i want wanted to communicate with those uh, with those murals okay Anyways, I'm I'm not answering your question. I'm sorry. No, you're, you're doing a great job. And I'm seeing in the chat that people are enjoying your description and your passion behind it. So don't feel like you need oh, to- Oh, passion, there's certain... passion. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't feel like you need to bottle your answers up. Let us know what, you know, what it takes, what it feels like. Because oh. I feel like a lot of our members, when, you know, even if they're not in filmmaking, when they're creating an innovation, when they're designing something for a class or for a customer, uh, they go through these different phases of research, of- like you said, of trying to figure out the process and then what do we, what do I want the end user to feel mm -hmm. with this product that I'm bringing to market? So I think there's a lot of great parallels between what you're doing Absolutely. and what a lot of our, our members are trying to accomplish. Think, 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 things, anything you create needs to be a response to a reality, <clears throat> to a need, a reality. It's, it's always like, so when you, when you, when, when you, when you design a movie, it's the same, you know, the same principle and it's like and you analyze a scene it's like this is and there's something very artistic but very methodol there's a methodology of like you mm -hmm. to get the uh, to get your answer you know like okay. you yeah so i think another thing that stood out for me was that the, what I liked about it was it was unique enough that you knew this was a different world, but there was also some parallels where you felt like you could actually be there too. Like this could mm -hmm. be the future um, mm -hmm. for, for humanity. And along that way, I'm sure you drew from certain things that you've done before. And then there's also certain things that you hadn't experienced yet. Is there anything in, in this project that you had just never done before and you really had to, to figure out how to create something almost from, from a, a start. I would say all of it. I've never done a movie like that. That's, that's for sure. Okay. And, um, and the approach, uh, Denis, uh, Denis approach um, is always has to be uh, to, be, to believe, to believe in the unbelievable, to believe in the fant fantastic aspect of a story. You need to ground the elements that will tell that well, the visual elements that will tell the story in a in a reality which has a certain familiarity. Mm. So, so that's that's kind of a principle that that he has. And uh, on this movie, uh, the sets were 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 like for for Denis, uh, it's really important to give an immersive uh, to give him an immersive uh, uh, setting sets. Um, which which meant for this, if you're going to design it big scale, you better build them big, big scale as well. So um, so we obviously we add we there's a there's a ton a ton of visual effect in that movie, but we went uh, old school Hollywood um, by building mega uh, mega sets, which was uh, which was quite. Quite great. Some 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 sets were we were allowed we were able to fit them on a sound stage, all the way to the perms and the, like from wall to wall. Some some we needed to find solutions to 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 to, to create them, because I had my 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 my, my concept art, I had my models, but uh, there, there's a physical reality, there's a budgetary reality as well. So 
So a lot of them, we we had to scratch our, our head. Uh, I lost all my hair on my on that project. <laughs> um, but uh, and, and there was a lot of sleepless nights. But as a team, you know, like uh, Paul Lambert, uh, Greg Fraser, I, my my uh, art director uh, Tom Brown and uh, Gergely Rieger and uh, and uh, and Tibor Lazar, we 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 found a solution for. There's a, the nexus. The nexus was the set. Uh, I call it the nexus. In the movie, they don't call it the nexus. It was it's a as an inside, but it's it's the big. I don't know um, if you remember in the movie that there's a there's a there's a dome. There's a dome room when they enter the lab, the Fremen, they hide in the, you know, when they make the yeah. little coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, that set uh, was, could not fit anywhere. So how, and, and it needed sunlight to create that shadow uh, on the ground. So, um, uh, so we, we were like, how the hell are we going to do that? So the solution was we, in Origo studio, we there's like stage one, two, three, and four, which are like which are like they create like a like an alley, like a big, wide, big, big, white alley. And we um, we were uh, we we decided to 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 clad the walls of that of that structure uh, sand color, like a like a, a shade of sand because that's. That's the color that the, the the set would have. If you if you look at the at the image and you clean your eyes like that, huh? then you said, okay, you take your color chart and that's the average color. Okay, so that's that may not sound like a like a lot to you, but bear with me on this explanation. Okay. The the floor was sand, so we that's easy. You put sand. There's going to be a little curve about that sand later on. So you okay? Look, so okay. okay. Then we created the entrance at one end of that at, of that alley. We closed down with the structure thirty feet high, the curve, the entrance. Then the rest of it was tight fabric, all the way up to uh, 65, 70, 70 feet high. We closed down the other side, so we created this this beige box, and and a part of the mast was also. Uh, of the mass that supports the ceiling in the concept part uh, was 30 feet high, was, was built on, on the middle of, the, of, that, the, of that area. For the ceiling, we had riggers pull like uh, wires mm -hmm. and we made a retractable roof with the spokes that would create the shadow on the floor for on the sand. Okay, so that's that's very the theoretical right now, but that's really problem solving. Yeah. Those buildings, they were the sun orientation of those buildings was definitely not perfect. So we had uh, between I think uh, ten forty five in the morning until eleven thirty to shoot that scene. So a lot of it was rehearsal, rehearsal. Okay, the sun is coming. Yeah. You need this. You, you need a day which is not going to be overcast, and in the you need a day because it's all fabric, where there's not going to be any wind because the, you don't want the, the shadow to. And you uh, you need a, a week of uh, of hard sun, uh, because you don't want the the sun to be wet because it's going to show. So we so we had always we always had the um, agricultural uh, machinery during that week to turn over the the sand hmm. to make sure that it was that it was drying anyways that was uh, that was a team a total team effort that set and uh, i think in the at the end of that day we all high five each other because we needed it also on a, on a, on a more like uh, beyond the beyond the, the the creative and the technical uh, aspect to solve that problem we needed also the support from production because that was that was crazy, but that was crazy enough to work. Because when something is crazy enough to work, you check out. When something is too easy, you take it for granted. When something is really, really, really hard to accomplish, then I think everybody has got their angles covered. Because you okay, this could fail. This could fail. There's so many ways that this 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 thing could fail. 
that you put everything in 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 process to make sure it doesn't. So so when things are very very hard, most of the time they end up working really well because everybody's on it, right? Everybody's nervous about it. And everybody's on it, and um, and anyway, so the, so production supported that idea, and we had multiple windows during and windows meaning during different days that we would have been ready to shoot it because you cannot guarantee like a month before that on that day, there's not going to be wind. There's not going to be sun. So that was a, that was an exciting, uh, an exciting moment during, uh, during production. And uh, we're very happy of uh, how it turned out with, uh, with the help of our friends in the, in VFX, that one. Yeah, I think oftentimes with any product um, we, we take for granted the amount of problem solving of, of ideas that come behind bringing that to us yeah. and everything from the shadows to the light, to the mm -hmm. sand, not being wet. That's incredible that you had to oh, yeah. and, 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 and the reason for, for not having done this, like with, with green screen. So it's because green would have contaminated the, 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 the skin color, everything else, you know, you'd have, you'd, you'd be in a, and that's why we, on the movie, throughout the movie, we, 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 um, we avoided, green screen we didn't use any green screen on the movie because because you want to have the the perfect light quality for a better integration um so you, you'd always whenever we needed that we'd use a uh we'd use a beige sun color the, the average color of what the set would be in the so so you'd have the right bounce of color and yeah, color yeah light. that's incredible and um Thank you for share, just showcasing like how much of that comes and a part of the process that we might not see. And, and I can tell from the chat that people are appreciating your eyes on, on that and your experiences. Um, I kind of want to flip it a little bit now and say of the, of the innovations that you see in the world of Dune or that you created and, and help make part of, um, a lot of us tend to draw inspiration, just like you draw, drew inspiration for your career from Star Wars. Some of us may have drawn inspiration for um, design or engineering yeah. from previous movies or cartoons. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the, the Power Ranger watch that uh -huh. you could, you know, talk to the uh -huh. other Power Rangers right uh -huh. now. You know, as a child, I wish I could have that and talk to my real friends. I had the toy that would just play yeah. a pre-recorded version. But now my watch has my heart rate. It tracks how many miles I run. It tells me to drink water, all, all that kind of stuff. What would you love to see from this world that you helped create and from the original story? What would you like to see our members bring to life in our current world? Is there anything, any technology, any innovation from the world of Dune that you would like to see them work on? Wow, that's a great question. I would like to see these ornithopters fly for real. Okay. Because Can you we, describe those for those who haven't seen uh, the, the, the video ornithopter, yet? Ornithopters are like, I would say they're like helicopter type uh, ships. Uh, that came from the the, the, the brains of uh, Frank Herbert. They're like helicopters type of ship, but they they have wings uh, that flap, that vibrate like uh, like, like or flap like birds. But we uh, the, we 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 use the dragonfly as a, as a reference. And um, when uh, when we 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 designed it uh, with uh, George Hall and Kali Wirtz, um, we um, we made sure that it would look real, that people would believe it could fly, mm -hmm. and that um, and that uh, so we 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 had them made at the at the. Um, at uh, BGI in London, in Long Cross. It's a, it's a great uh, shop. Uh, they, they build amazing things. They're super precise. And when we were making those models, we made sure that the um, landing gear, when it, all, all, the, all the components, like all the engineering of that landing gear would work, you know? So, mm -hmm. so, so even though some elements would be enhanced in CG, it would not be any any ghost things I would call them. So nothing would cross, like no, no, no solid things would, would go through another piece of like, so everything works, even though the wings, the wings and the, the length of the wings should be a certain amount. So, so that there was a lot of uh, analysis um, on, on computer on on models on, uh, <clears throat> sorry, how the wind would, the, the weight of that, those things were 11 tons. 
<clears throat> yeah. So and how 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 they would move, how they and we studied the, the movement of uh, of uh, of bees and um, in slow motion. So how how do the the wings, you know, like how they. So it's funny because. Recently, I was uh, in an interview. I was uh, explaining, uh, you know, the, the concept of the, the, you know, like my my work on on, on Dune, and I, and I was talking about those birds, uh, those ornithopters, and uh, how we how we took them from Long Cross in London and flew them to uh, Aqaba uh, in Jordan because that's the first the first place we we see we we actually s s filmed them. So we needed to, and. Um, they were, she, the journalist went, wait a minute, these things fly for real? Because it was believable. I said, no, 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 we, we, we put them on, a, on, a, on, a, on an Antonov. And we, we, because I did not mention like it wasn't a cargo, but I said, we flew them to, but that person, ah, because I, I would have believed it. <laughs> <laughs> for a second, I was going to ask you if I could get a test flight <laughs> on one. <laughs> you got me very excited. But they did look believable. And it was cool because you could see the inspiration from from nature right the yeah. the dragonfly is what i thought of when i saw yeah. it and there's also the see... there's all, sorry there's also the the the, the, the top of a the cannon of a, a of a of a new stealth tank uh russian okay. uh, stealth tank and there's also uh part of it is uh there's also inspiration from a, a sculpture in a uh, battlefield in bulgaria but okay there's, 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 there's those are the three elements sorry Okay, so yeah, that came together and it was to a point where I, I felt like, okay, I think this could be possible. This would be really cool. And I could see why it might live in that world, why it might be designed for that world because mm -hmm. of what they were facing that was different than flight that we might be facing on Earth. So I thought that was such a cool example. And I'm seeing in the chat, people are hoping that there'll be toy versions of it for, for Christmas time, hopefully. <laughs> and um, someone also, he, uh, Harim mentioned that it uh, looks a lot like what he imagined them as as a kid. So great! Oh, work thank on, you. That's uh, that's thank you. That's that's a, that's that's a very uh, oh wow. Thank you for that comment. Yeah, I think that's kind of the dream of what you were yeah, doing yeah, exactly you want to for right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 the ultimate goal, right? It's the yeah, ultimate yeah. goal to 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 try to match with what people. Because when you read a book, you know, like you have a you have your imagination. I have my imagination. Uh, you know, we all have our different imagination. So, so sometimes it's always quite stressful to, uh, especially for a book like that. To, um, not, we were like we were we were we were going for Denny's vision, but you know, like uh, we all want like people to 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 see the movie that they also imagine. You know, when 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 they, uh, we don't want people to be disappointed and say, "Well, that's not at all how I saw it." Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so. no, that's great. And I, you got some uh, case study here that it did, you did succeed great. in that. And people want the toy as well. We saw a couple more there. Um, so I want to open up to some of the questions that the audience has been sharing. There's a lot of excitement in the chat and in the Q&A. So if you haven't had a chance to jot down a question, please enter them there. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, there's one that stood out to me here from Ulysses that uh, he's asking, what steps do you take to grow your creativity and build up uh, inspiration for a project are there any unexpected places you draw inspiration from ah that's a that's a that's a very good question because every every project is 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 quite different but um uh it, my my inspiration i my, my i always try you know like i when I, I was uh, was growing up i i i, I used to love uh, looking at album covers from from bands and try to find a subliminal aspect. Uh, is there a meaning? The Beatles were really good to do that. Mm -hmm. So is there any? So I I, I um, that's kind of a part of a my goal is always to have something that will have a meaning. And my inspiration, um, a lot of it comes from uh, a lot of it comes from architecture and in, in in general, uh, not necessarily modern architecture, but like a ancient arch architecture for that movie, like ziggurat architecture, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Frank Herbert was, uh, was, uh, was an ecologist. So, so I, I got inspired by nature a lot. Um, like this, the still, the, 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 the still tent is a, a cockroach. Basically it's a cockroach. If you, if you look at it, 
uh, it's the shape and it's also has the line outside the exterior line because the cockroach is is a survivor it, it mm-hmm. will survive even a, a atomic cataclysm um the uh others oh, there's the inspiration uh Denis one one day comes to me and says uh pat can you can you think of something of the most nightmarish ship ugliest ship a nightmare like a the, the worst nightmare you could so uh okay okay um so i i um a rockfish you know it's it's so ugly a rockfish yeah and then you mix the rockfish with that american bombers in afghanistan that, sh- that used to shoot in all directions i don't know if you ever saw those pictures uh, over uh, tora bora but uh it was just like the, the the so so you mix those two together and um and uh, it was like a nightmare vision right so so it's like mixing thing I, I i it's curiosity and it, it's and it's also the, not just curiosity i would say it's like it's an emotional response that 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 drives me it's like what and i'm trying to yeah it's it's it, it really is like an emotional response for me uh what um and that will that will drive my curiosity to an ins- inspiration finding or draw like or a draw what what yeah it's, it's it comes from 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 feelings yes, it's, it seems like it's a mix of uh heart and brain coming together yeah yeah to, totally, to bring totally. It to life totally and then and then and then it and then it switches at one point uh, once mm-hmm. once they're created then it switches to the technical aspect how how do you do it you know then yeah how then it becomes it's it's really that's great about 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 production design it's like it's it's really a mix it's a, it's a good balance of 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 both and our you know, organization skills as well because mm. you can uh, you need to be organized because otherwise it can turn, it can be very messy you can have all the the ideas in the in the world but you need to deliver so to be to yeah. to to be able to to be able to deliver you need to be organized that's for sure you can't you can't be messy you can't uh, you can wing it you know it's like exactly it need, it need, there's like the, there's a very uh, there's steps that uh, and there's there's a there's a very real delivery date, you know. Yeah, I think a lot of our our engineers and members love process, so hopefully that will help them along the way. And that there's several questions. I, I can't pull one specific because there are a lot of them very similar, um, stating that they're studying some type of engineering or or tech and but interested and in, or have a passion for the filmmaking industry. So is there anything that you would give in terms of advice for them to start making their way into that world? And um, Shay also asked along the lines of very similar, but for, for youth, for students that um, are not studying these subjects yet, and sometimes they think, well, why would I ever need math or why would I ever need um, science? What kind of skill sets uh, are required and how do they take their first steps into uh, your world? Oh my God, that's a, that's a multi-part uh, question. <laughs> um, well, first of all, um, you need a, uh, uh my god it's 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 it's, the the, my my world has has to do with um with physics it has to do with mathematics that's for sure because uh has to do with engineering a lot because when you build structures uh like right now in i'm in um it's gonna be it's it's a bit more boring uh than 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 uh, than uh than uh, building spaceships but i'm building a house in wetlands in australia on so wetlands means uh, on uh, like on like, the, the ground is not not necessarily the the, the most stable so mm-hmm. it's finding solutions to bring you know to to to, to build that two story farmhouse american farmhouse in a wetland in australia making sure that it's the, the ground is stable so so, so that there's there's a lot of discussions, um, and also you cannot dig very very deep because mm-hmm. it's a Aboriginal uh, uh, sacred place. So you, you're only to so build a two story house in a protected area where you can only dig thirty centimeters in a wetland. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like so a there's great a lot problem. There, there's <laughs> a lot of mathematical like a lot of uh, weight supports uh, yeah. So you don't want your you don't want your crew to be uh, to be on the second uh, second floor and then the, the house goes uh, yeah. so 
Yeah, no, no, and, but uh, there, there, there's uh, and obviously you, 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 you have a, you have a team, uh, a, a team of you know, there's engineers in the team. There's like a architect in the team, and there was like a, and uh, and we solve those problems together, right? Okay. Uh, so, so, um, uh, what was I going with this? Uh, no, no. So, 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 yeah. So, so. So, so, so math, math, mathematics uh, and physics are, are extremely important, uh, important skills as well. Um, and then how about in terms of, um, what, sorry? So yeah, how about in terms of taking their first steps towards that industry? So let's taking say they're the passionate steps, about those. Taking the first steps, I, 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 uh, I do, there's lots of program, the ADG, uh, our, our directors guild have a, uh, have a, uh, have a lot of programs to help that people get the, get into the art department, uh, like um, and uh, every every movie uh, we have uh, internships, uh, people who can who can apply for internships who who are uh, interested in a, in, a, in a in a certain aspect and okay well come on board you know we'll 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 start by making models or whether you're going what, what what do you like to so 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 that's 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 pretty great what the the adg and the uh, and the um directors guild of canada also does that uh, and and right now on the movie in, in australia the union here also does that so so there, there's application for 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 me how how i got into the the industry is i went uh, to school in communication studies in in at concordia and it was uh meeting people who were PAs and I and I really started. I, I had no idea I was going to be a production designer in my life. It's just I was. It was just cause to effect. I yeah. the first time I I I ended up doing a uh, working a designing a music video. I, it was a total accident, you know. It's like someone someone who was supposed to do the job was not in the perfect mental condition to do the job or or. or yeah, she, she arrived stoned and she had spent all the money. So, so, so I was asked like, uh, I was a PA and can you do something? And I did it. And then, and then it was still luck basically, because then the director liked what I, what I did in, in not even 24 hours and then started giving me all, all of his other job. So I learned my, 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 my trade, uh, by making good. And also I learned a lot by making bad decisions you know because you learn when, when you do like when you when when you uh, you mess up you really learn <laughs> you, know, you learn not to do it you learn a lot from your mistakes right so that's 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 that that's my my journey was was, was that okay. but um but i i see uh i see uh surrounding me a lot of people who come from uh, from design schools or from uh engineering from architecture um so um yeah does that okay. answer your question yeah no absolutely i think that's a good step for a lot of students um that have similar skill sets or passions to, to go down that path and, 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 it's, hit, and, 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 it, and it's perseverance yes never be because uh there's a couple of times i was thinking uh especially the first 10 years were, were very tough and you're like oh i'm quitting this this is like mm -hmm. you know I, this is not worth it, you know. Like, what, what, what am I doing? I, I'm, I'm playing. I should get a more serious job, you know. Like, but like, no, you know. Like, uh, my, my wife was extremely supportive. I like, no, you'll be miserable if you don't do this. Hmm. Carry on, carry on, you know. So, so I love uh, that, and you see that in the movie. You see a theme of kind of facing your fears to overcome challenges. And I think that fear of failure can oftentimes prevent us from taking on those big challenges, getting out of our comfort zone. It's going to take you to the place that you ultimately want it to be. If fear you don't let is that the, the mind way. killer. That, yeah, fear is the mind killer. <laughs> exactly. So you, fear should be, should be your drive. But, but again, going back to the crazy enough to work, fear should be your drive. But when you fear, you know, you, 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 you need to analyze the situation so mm -hmm. but uh yeah so so i i don't remember ever working on a project that i felt totally comfortable walking in i'm always scared mm -hmm. like any project you know like, until i find the angle of a, of a the angle of approach 
I'm always like, okay, I'm gonna fail this. Nobody will ever, every time, every time, guarantee, but nobody will ever hurt me again. Why did I take this? You know, like, uh, <laughs> nah, it's like, it's, it's always like, it's always, I always end up in crazy situation. I said, I said, why, 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 why is it so complicated? Like, why did I say yes? And I get, <laughs> and I go into this moment in my head, like a uh, total denial. And then, uh, then I calm down and uh, mm. I have a quote here. It says, uh, have big dreams, you'll grow into them. And so I think yeah. that's what you're telling us is just live on the edge of your comfort zone. At the beginning, yeah. it's going to feel crazy, but in the yeah. end, it's going to take you somewhere wonderful. So. No, no, it, it, absolutely. You live on the edge of your comfort zone because, yeah, it's the edge of the comfort zone because that way you'll always grow from each experience. You'll not never like fall asleep, you know, like, a, and, and that's what's so thrilling about it because you, you grow, you learn every day, you learn new stuff. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and at one point uh, you, you travel and you meet new people and you meet the, you, which, which is, which is, which is great when you're a curious person. Like I travel all the time. I, I see new things. I see, I saw an animal this week that I never thought existed, you know, in the wetlands, which, which is great, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I think that's the perfect note to, to end with, with our members, just, you know, go after these challenges, live on the edge of your comfort zone, um, you know, solve these fun and exciting problems. Um, so Patrice, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing. Oh, your it's insight. my pleasure, Jay. It was super yeah. fun. Super, super fun. I know our audience had a blast. So please throw any, any comments and feedback in, in the chat. Um, not only for sharing your, your passion and your expertise in this space, but some of these tips and, and tricks that are going to be valuable for our members, no matter what path they take uh, in the future. So for those of you who haven't had a chance yet, Dora's got some very exciting news to share with you all. Definitely go check out Dune. I had an absolutely incredible time watching the movie. I was on the edge of my seat from the beginning credits, like I mentioned. <laughs> And like you were hinting at earlier on, I was the last one to leave because I kept watching everything that you mentioned. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And if ever possible, when you see it, please go see it in IMAX because it yes. was designed for IMAX. So I'm, I'm just, it's, it's, yeah, thank you. You can feel it. Like I was saying earlier, like you can feel what they're trying to get you to experience from the sound engineering to obviously the, the large IMAX screen. It's, it's a whole nother world. So thank you so much for all the thought you put into the movie and all the thought you put into this conversation with our members. Thank you. Okay, well, what, an, what an amazing show today. Thank you both. I know I can't wait to see the movie. So we are about to post something that you can RSVP and sign up for the pre-screening. So Renee, let's get that for them. So any of our participants that watch this, use the QR code right here. We encourage you to join us for the pre-screening and get your tickets by signing up through here. We also encourage you to post your experience with Shep and Patrice by tagging at Dune Movie or hashtag Dune Movie on your social media. So signing off from Ship National. Thank you again, Patrice and Jay. Buenas noches, adiós. <laughs>